let's move to China, because China is an example much bigger than, than, than Syria of, uh, of a repressive single party system uh, in, in which the, the government uh, has the ability and the technological know-how to, to track people who are dissidents uh, and to get them to stop communicating with each other, all of the things that didn't happen in Egypt and Tunisia and Libya that allow these revolutions to happen. Um, maybe you could just broaden this out and, and talk about Google's tumultuous relationship with, uh, with China. Obviously, uh, in the last period, uh, the, the company has made a decision, which is a little bit of a thumb in the eye of the Chinese government, to alert people using the search engine uh, about words that might get them disconnected from the internet. It, it's, a, it's a not unsubtle, but not completely blunt way of communicating the idea that, hey, we know you guys are messing with, uh, with the freedom of the internet. It was a small number of seconds before the Chinese responded to our right. latest provocation, if you will. Um, China is very different from the Arab world. The Arab world, of course, has grown out of a tribal structure and is a different religious structure. China has been a sort of an organized hierarchical structure for on the order of 5,000 years. There's a lot of reasons to believe that China, um, China works because its citizens like the kind of structure. They like the kind of uh, order that China, that China now provides. And there's a lot of anthropological history that says that this might be true. So, you know, from my perspective, that means that dissidents don't have a voice, people are not empowered, and many of us, and certainly I believe, that you can't build a true knowledge society without true freedom of expression. And China, of course, wants that. So, as a long story, about five China years ago... China wants the knowledge society without course. the freedom. But, but at some level, China, uh, China, if you talk to their leaders, uh, or more, more likely listen to them because they don't really listen to you, um, the, uh, really want to be at the global stage and they want to have the kind of GDP that you have in the West, you know, $30,000 per, per capita, that kind of stuff. Um, and it's unclear whether they, China's current model produces much more than a middle income trap. Uh, it's a largely a manufacturing society. The institutions that we take for granted, the universities, the rule of law, and so forth, are not fully implemented. There's a raging debate among, analyt among experts as to whether China will overcome those strategies. So enter Google five years ago, and our theory was that if we put up with the censorship, which we did not like, we would empower the citizens, and the, the citizens would, would revolt if this stuff was taken away from them. And uh, our experiment was wrong, um, and we're not perfect, and we make mistakes. And what happened was the censorship got worse and worse, and then about a year and a half ago, we pulled the plug, and we moved to Hong Kong. And so the joke that we told the Chinese was, you said it's one country, two systems. We like the other system. Uh, they didn't appreciate that either. And the way they don't have like a great sense of humor about no. internet freedom. Instead, they have something called the Great Firewall. And the Great Firewall is a computer system that's very sophisticated. It sits between us and the mainland part of China, including, and Hong Kong is on our side. And it does censorship and it throttles things down. So when we move to Hong Kong, to spare you the technical details, we're on the other side of this firewall. So we can poke through it, we understand it, we can measure you it. You literally moved all the servers. We did. Yeah. Uh, we had to by law, and we right. want to observe their law because we don't want to be put in jail in China for obvious reasons. <laughs> and so, uh, so one of the things that we did recently, which is, is the current cat and mouse game, is that when you enter a pro forbidden query in China, we will actually predict that it's likely to be blocked which is driving them crazy. And tell the user. Yeah. And it's illegal for us, under their law, to announce what those keywords are, because that would viol then we would be, they would be telling you the things that they don't want you to know. And it's illegal for, and I would not tell you what they are now, because I don't want to endanger our employees. But you can imagine those queries are involving things like Falun Gong and the Chinese government and those sorts of things. Is it a, is it a pretty wide basket of issues yeah. that they can't? But they're very concerned. If you think about a, a, a government that is not elected, their number one goal is to stay elected, and the best way to stay elected is not to be embarrassed.